This is the last video in this online lesson on indirect tax and looking at evaluation. This time, as part of our evaluation, we're also going to be thinking about some application of indirect taxes to different types of markets. So just as a starting point on the screen there for you, we have some pros and cons of the sugar tax, which we've referred to a few times throughout this online lesson. I suggest that you take the time to just pause the video and read through those by yourself because what you're going to need them for is a writing task building an exam style paragraph. So you might want to just jot down some notes on the sugar tax uh, based on what's on the screen. And before you flick forward to the next slide, just make sure you are happy with what you're reading. Now then, a exam skill task and this is something that you could write an answer to and then submit your answer to your teacher at school or college and they can then assess what you've managed to learn through this online lesson so we've got a question at the top there evaluate the likely effectiveness of raising the rate of tax on sugary drinks in the UK I haven't put a number of marks against that because your teachers will probably be able to advise you as to what kind of marks, uh, mark tariff they would like that question to be. It could be a longer answer, it could be one that they see as being useful for a short, uh, more like data response type, and it also depends on which exam board you follow. So you could just ask your teacher for some advice here, but either way, your answer should include everything that is in the middle of that screen. So let's just work through that. You're going to start with an outline of the nature of the market failure associated with sugary drinks. It's impossible for you to write about the effectiveness of the tax unless you're looking at what it is you want it to be effective against. So start with an outline of the market failure associated with sugary drinks. Then move on to an analytical paragraph and in this, you want to look at how raising the rate of the indirect sugar tax helps to correct the market failure that you've already outlined. Remember, the question is very clear there. It's not about the effectiveness of the tax. It's about the effectiveness of raising the rate of tax. So be very careful to answer the question precisely. Now, what do you need to include in your analysis? Well, we've got four little bullet points in the middle there of the screen. Ideally, a carefully labeled diagram. You want to use strong chains of reasoning using lots of connected phrases. Make sure that where possible, you are using technical economic language. And you really need to think about the context of sugary drinks. This might mean that you want to do a little bit of research on exactly what those tax rates might be and the nature of the sugary drinks market. So really think about the context. Then follow your analysis with an evaluation paragraph. Look at why raising the rate of that sugar tax might not be effective in correcting the market failure and perhaps look at other possible inefficiencies in that market that could um, ensue as a result. Finally, wrap up your answer with a short, you know, one or two sentence summary of the argument. Directly answer the question about whether raising the rate of sugary tax uh, sorry, raising the rate of tax on sugary drinks will be effective or not. Um, and as we suggested at the bottom there, you can always submit your answer to your teacher for some feedback and assessment. When you've done that, move on to this next activity. And we have jotted down five possible markets in which there are um, indirect taxes or the potential for a change in indirect taxes. Now, you really want to just pause the video for a good sort of 15 to 20 minutes. For each of the uh, items listed on the screen, can you jot down one advantage and one disadvantage of an indirect tax on each of those items? Remember to think very carefully about the nature of the market failure problem that the tax is trying to solve. Really think about the specific context as well. So you've got those five products um, which you're going to just jot down either on your downloadable worksheet or um, just a piece of paper. And when you've done that, uh, we have some answers that will flash up on the screen in just a second, which you can compare your answers to mine. Don't forget that you might have very different ones to me. Just add mine to your own list so that you have a fuller, more comprehensive set of notes. 
So you can see on the screen there, I've got the first three, coffee cups, plastic bags and e-cigarettes. Um, in each case, the top box is, the, uh, is an advantage and the bottom box is a disadvantage. I'm not going to read through them for you. You can take your time to just read through that as slowly and as carefully as you would like. And when you've done that, just move on to the final few products, which are on the next slide. Here they are, thinking about stamp duty on houses for sellers rather than buyers and petrol. Hopefully you've come up with a range of other ideas and something that you could think about doing um, is to reproduce the paragraphs, the, the arguments that you did earlier in this activity on the sugar tax and replace it with one of these examples, petrol, stamp duty, plastic bags, etc. And think about how your answer might differ if you chose to uh, consider a different market. That's a bit of an extension task for you and something your teachers might like to encourage you to do. So just a final thing to think about, and we're not going to do this in any great detail here, but just thinking about something we did back in online lesson one when we started to think about the impact of intervention on different stakeholders. So, for example, in this case, uh, we've suggested a frequent flyer tax on people who uh, take more than one international flight a year. So just a, something to finish off, just a thinking task. We're not suggesting any answers here for you. Uh, think about which economic stakeholders might consider that intervention positive and which economic stakeholders might regard that intervention as a negative. Again, you could go back through the uh, examples we've looked at in this video activity and carry out the same task there as well if you want a little bit more of a challenge and to really extend your learning.